We are going to speak on what Angie and I feel is your most amazing tool in this business, and that is social media and how to brand yourself. So how to set yourself apart from the coach sitting next to you. And we both realize that this can become kind of heavy and tricky and difficult to understand. And the word branding carries a lot of weight to it, right? And sometimes we can shy away from it because we don't understand it. But what we want you guys to do is start to think about branding in a different way. I want you to start to think about branding as that gut feeling that people get when they come to your social media page. What do you want them to know? Do you want them to feel at home? Do you want them to feel related to? We want you to keep that in mind when you're thinking about your brand instead of kind of this word that carries a lot of heavy weight. We have kind of a disadvantage and an advantage at the same time as Beachbody coaches. We all work with and use the same amazing product. And I think a lot of the times, we as business owners and as network marketers can confuse the word product with the word brand. They're very different. A product is something manufactured in a factory, and a brand is really something that's bought into by your customer or your coach or your network. So we want to talk to you guys today about changing it up, how to inform your language, some really tangible tools to put into action into your social media, regardless of what platform today. A hundred percent. And I don't know if you guys have realized this yet, but we're bringing you the goods. We know that we are the last workshop. This is the stuff that can completely transform your business. This is what has completely changed everything for Bonnie and I. We were not pros when we first started. You know, we don't go to school to be beach body coaches. All of us start at ground zero. And if we're being honest, it's incredibly overwhelming to build a brand, whatever that is, which we're going to explain to you today and exactly how to do it. But what happens is we start to mold ourselves into what we think that we need to be based off of every other coach in the network or every other health and fitness person on social media and what happens write this down we get lost in a sea of sameness don't do that and by the way when you're writing notes it helps you to stay awake if you like wiggle in your chair and you do a little booty dance <laughs> quick tip for you now what we want to talk to you guys about today and I did say we're sharing the goods the two top questions that we both get is how to find people, where to find them, and how to get people. Now, I hate that term, how to get people. We're not tricking people into anything. But the way that you're going to find people, we're going to go over all of this, and where to find people on social media, your type of people. But you have to meet them where they are, and that's how you're going to build trust. Same thing with getting people. You're not getting people to do anything. There's no trickery. You're getting someone to believe in themselves because they trust you enough. And the way that you're going to build trust is by taking down the walls. The biggest obstacle in my business was being honest and sharing with the world that I had gained weight on my beach body journey. And when I took down those walls and I was brutally honest and started sharing the things that made me incredibly unique at the same time normal because there was a sea of other people just like me, people that ate donuts and enjoyed Disney and have weird little crazy dogs and people that love to travel, that that's their main priority in life. That's my vibe on social media, and that's what makes me me. Right, but how, when you're sitting by yourself at home behind your laptop, do you communicate your vibe to everybody every single day on social media? I want to break it down to some simple, tactical, tangible steps that you guys can put into effect to create this word vibe, right? So every single month when I start my month, I make three lists that I base every single post on social media off of. This is for a few reasons. It's so that I can remain consistent and I can remain having ideas throughout the month as life gets busy and things get hard. I often hear, oh my gosh, I don't know what to post about today. This is my trick. And this is how you can start to teach people what your brand is. So the first list that I make is what makes you special or unique. And this often stops people because they think, my life isn't special, it's not unique, I sit at home all day with my two dogs, that's not very interesting. 
But when I say what's special or unique, I mean what are the painfully quirky things about you that someone else can relate to. You'll learn about a brand that people are less interested in you and more interested in what's in it for them through you, right? So they want to be able to come to your page, relate to you, and also know you. So here's a couple examples of my list from actually the month of May. Number one, this bug is out of control. <laughs> I found a charcoal toothpaste that really works. I was able to modify my workout for the yard. I was able to experience a personal shopper, and I discovered I loved antique shopping. Okay, none of that is extraordinary. None of that is something that someone else couldn't go do, but it's very relatable. The second list that I make every single month on good old pen and paper is what have I overcome? And I do not mean what have you overcome in your marriage, in your life, in your childhood. I don't mean any of those grand things. Like what during the day have you overcome today? My examples, I passed up cookie cake at a party, hashtag winning, right? I overcame comparison. I was comparing myself to other coaches and then I reeled it back in and thought, I'm gonna focus on my own success. You know, super busy days before travel and folding the laundry. I mean, I personally feel like I deserve a medal when I fold the entire load of laundry. And, right? and the third list that I make every single month is what is normal about me. And this is the one that confuses people because they think that sharing normal things turns people off, but it's actually the opposite. The biggest superpower that you have is that you are you and you're an everyday person. No one relates to perfection. They wanna know things like, I restarted the laundry three times today. I love the Bruno Mars song that's on the radio all the time. I took a nap today. The past 17 videos on my phone are all of my dogs. You want people to see you in person or see you on social media and come up to you and know seven things about you right away as soon as they meet you. All right, so these are obviously the truths about us. We're peeling back that onion. We're showing people our real vulnerable side. That's what people want. That is your brand. That is the most authentic version of you because you're not showing that highlight reel that no one finds fun. Your viewers and you don't find it fun because you can never continue it on. It's like this ongoing game that just keeps playing itself out. And it is so freeing to just be you. Real talk for two seconds, I had a fully different outfit plan for today. And I had heels and it would not have made you guys comfortable to see me like hiking up my dress and trying to walk in heels not a pretty thing, you guys don't wanna see it. And it just makes your viewers more comfortable and you more comfortable, so why wouldn't you just be you? And that's our first tip to being you and building trust is just taking down that wall. The other part is meeting people where they're at. That's truly how you build trust. You don't make people feel awkward in some weird setting where you're taking them into email right away and getting straight into the, to the sell and trying to sell them something because I will tell you right now, you will never get to a yes. And the way that you do it and the way that you find your people is you go and meet them halfway where they hang out in their playground on social media. And the way that we both do this is we'll go into Facebook groups that we have interests in that have nothing to do with fitness or beach body. I am in so many dog mom groups, it's scary. And that's what I truly enjoy. I am in Disney foodie groups. You guys might even see me in there. I totally nerd out over that stuff. Similarly, on Instagram, I will search those hashtags, Disney nerd. I do that, I really do, and that is how I find my people. And we connect on that first, and I make a friend first. Same thing in your conversations. The way that you get someone to yes, the way that you get someone, is you just get them to believe in themselves by trusting you, by being their friend. It's pretty freaking cool that I have met almost all of my best friends. Bonnie is now one of my greatest friends and I met her because of Beachbody. We, ha we are so lucky, we are so blessed because of Beachbody and we have this platform to be able to reach out from all over the world and build all of these relationships. And it's as simple as that of making a friend, not equating it to a transaction, to success club points, the commission, but a life, a new best friend. You know, it's interesting, we always hear this training on creating your customer avatar. And that is exactly what I did when I was a brand new coach. I picked out an image from Google Images and I wrote a big long synopsis about who she was, what she loved to do, and she looked nothing like me and had different interests than me. 
So what I found happening is that my message on social media was completely different than who I was as a coach. And this created a lot of friction and turmoil between my super early team when I was first a coach in the first couple months and who I was. Because I was not communicating to myself, I was communicating to some avatar that I didn't have a connection to. So instead of thinking of it like that, Every time you're posting on social media, just like a huge corporation would do with a commercial or their marketing strategy, you need to be speaking to yourself before Beachbody or your best friend. And how I stay on track with that is I make another list. So I make a list to say, okay, am I informing the correct kind of coach that I want to build my team? Some examples for me would be, wants to be a fitness coach but isn't totally fit. You know, are you attracting people who are kind of weary about the fact that they're not in the best shape, so being a coach intimidates them? That might be an indication that you're not talking enough about the fact that you don't need to be in great shape to, to be a coach. You know, loves to work hard but on her own terms. Are you frustrated because you're not attracting people who want to work hard, they quit when it gets really tough, but you're not talking enough publicly about the fact that it actually is hard? This is all part of a brand. You start to teach your team who to be. And this really interesting, cool, scary thing starts to happen. As you start to get closer to your brand and closer to your message, you will start to attract people who are exactly like you. Of course, we're all individuals, but they'll have the same wants, the same fears, and you'll be able to connect on a much deeper level, and it won't be so stressed. You guys, we have the coolest job in the world. We don't have to wear pencil skirts and we don't have to work and stand around a water cooler with people that we don't like. That is pretty, can we like, yes, no pencil <laughs> skirts. Dudes, same thing, no suit and tie for you guys. It's wicked awesome. We get to do what we love with the people that we love. I have met some of my greatest friends in this business and we enjoy donuts together, we wear Fabletics. It's amazing, that's our life. And that only was possible because we invited. And this is where we get into the good stuff. This is how Bonnie and I both invite. We do something called soft invites and direct invites. And the way that we do this is we will share throughout our whole week, so let's call that the seven of the one to seven rule, seven days in a row, a valuable post where we will ask for nothing from our audience, but we will give them as much as we possibly can. We will let them into our lives. We will paint a very clear picture of what it is that we do, and we will drop little subtle nuggets throughout the week of exactly what it is that we do in our challenge groups or as coaches. And then on day seven, we hit them up with an invite. It's kind of the same idea of jab, 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 right hook. If you guys ever read that book by Gary Vaynerchuk, that's the same idea. You're building trust by not constantly asking for something over and over and over again. And at the same time, if you can pair this with showing up where your people hang out. And don't use the excuse that I don't have any friends on Facebook. I didn't have Facebook when I signed up as a coach and I had under 100 followers on Instagram. I made a decision by doing what I talked about, by searching those hashtags and making connections one person at a time. And eventually that grew to be something incredible. But I hang out where my people are. I go out and find them. So if you have no one on your Snapchat, don't go hide there. Just because it's three posts a day and nobody's seeing it doesn't make it that it's reaching someone. So you have to think about where people are seeing these posts. And the most important part of building trust is showing up. You would be shocked by the people that are watching you. Even if you're not getting a like or a comment, there will be people that will sign up with you a year from now that are watching you right now at Summit. Exactly, and this word consistency is one of those words you've probably heard already six or seven times today. It starts to get watered down, it starts to get old, it starts to lose its original meaning and power punch. But it is so important in our business, especially in building a brand. No matter what the message is, you can direct it any way you please. It takes a person between seven and nine times to read something for it actually to register in their brain. There was a study done, and it was in the book Contagious by Jonah Berger about the D.A.R.E. initiative. I don't know if anyone remembers this, but when I was younger, there was a huge campaign against drugs called D.A.R.E. They would come to our school 
schools, there would be commercials, there would be after school activities sponsored by them. And they actually saw that during that campaign, the more they talked about how bad drugs were, the higher the number of adolescents trying drugs for the first time. Because they were so curious why everyone was talking about the drugs. So it doesn't matter if the message is good or bad, it doesn't matter what your specific brand is, but if you show up enough, and if you're consistent enough, you can teach people what to think about you, right? So we wanna give you some tactical tips to go home with, to audit yourself, to see if you're building a brand or if you're kind of just sharing a product from a factory, right? Because I want you guys to go home and be able to use this information. And this is something that you can do with your team, maybe on a team call, maybe with your family, a third party looking at your social media so you're not biased because it's very hard to be critical of ourselves. Number one, do you see your face? your body images that go with your message. A lot of people tend to want to hide behind the programs. I know I certainly do if I'm having a bad day, but people want to see what you're doing with the programs, not a box. Do you see your story through the products rather than the company? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you telling why you're getting your workout in? Are you saying why you overcame that? Why it's helping you? Or are you just simply sharing the fact that you're working out? Does your vibe speak to your tribe? So are you having a difficult time jiving with the people that you're attracting? Are you frustrated? Are you not connecting? Are they not showing up with you? Is it not easy? That is kind of a little note to yourself that maybe I need to change the way I'm speaking. And then finally, step back a little bit. Is it you or is it another coach? You know, I think it gets so hard to follow people we love in this business and, and we're so lucky because we have so many examples, but it can be very difficult to find your own voice if you're constantly sharing others. And that honestly is the biggest factor between a successful coach and a non-successful coach. If you can find your own voice, listen, we know this company works. We know the products work. We know the model works. But if you're never finding your true message and you're always sharing someone else's, that's where the disconnect comes in. So be honest with yourself and really try and pick that up. If it's cool with you guys, we would like to take down our walls for a second and be super real with you guys. When we first got started, and we still have moments of this, where we were very shy, both of us. We were very uncertain. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to share on social media. And we didn't know necessarily how to move our businesses forward. But one thing that we also have in common is we both sat in that audience in one of those chairs three to four years ago and we made a decision. And today, you can make a decision. I think it's pretty cool that in this business, there's moments that we can look back, both of us, and know the moment that our life changed forever. And that's what's possible with Beachbody. The day that I picked up Insanity for the first time, my life changed forever because I made a decision to commit to that program. Sitting in the chair that you have chosen to sit in today was fate. You're still in this room because of fate own that. Next year at this time, you can be whatever you choose to be in this business by making one simple decision today to not just let the notes in your notebook collect and be notes and to not let those pictures that you're taking of the slides just stay in your phone. Make a decision. It takes one second to make a decision that'll change your life forever. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much.